Hello everybody, Carl again. Uh, today I thought I'd bring you along for a quick video on making a power switch tail. Now, if you don't know, a power switch tail is essentially a black box that has uh, low voltage wires going into it and then also high voltage wires. So by high voltage I mean here in the United States we use 120 volts. So that's your regular wall plug that looks like this. Now this is a 120 volt grounded outlet, so that's going to go to uh, this box, what I'm using. And this is like a little Jiffy box I got from Lowe's or Home Depot sells them. They're pretty inexpensive, like 50 cents. And what I like about this box is that it's mostly sealed. As you can see that there's you know these plugs here, there's uh, terminals down here that keep a lot of the water out. And I'm going to be using this for my aquarium. now. I used this in a previous project, so you might be able to see there's some hot glue, and I really don't like hot glue, but I used it just to try to keep some of the water out. You can see I even used a uh, sealant washer and a face plate. So anyhow, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to plug my return pump into it, and then I'm going to run the 120 volt cord uh, out of the aquarium and actually plug it into a battery backup. Now, I want control over the plug if we have normal electricity. So if I'm doing a water change or there's something wrong with the aquarium, the uh, Arduino can shut down the return pump. So that's why I need to essentially put a relay inside of this box like this. And then I'm going to stick the plug in there and I'm going to seal it up. And then what will happen is I'll have this gray wire here running out, which will be uh, 5 volts ground and then my two inputs which will be uh, if you write the output high it'll actually activate the relays so uh, anyhow I figured it'd be interesting just to kind of take you along and show you how I do that now one of the relays I'm gonna set up is norma normally closed and what that means is that while the relay is in its off state or de-energized it's gonna allow electricity to flow from the plug out to the outlet so that when you write it high, it'll actually turn the device off. And that's because 99.9% .9 of the time, I want my return pump to run. And I don't want to wear this relay out or require it to have voltage to actually run. And the other relay, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it, but I want to just put it in the box because this is what I have. I'm going to do is normally open, which means that the only way for this to work is to write it high and it'll actually make the bottom plug go high. Uh, so um, I'll just take you through how I do it here. Okay, so the first connection I'll make here is my VCC wire. And what that'll do is that'll always be hot, and that way the Arduino doesn't have to uh, give it much current, or the relay won't pull much current because it'll pull from this red wire, which will be hot all the time. Now, the first set of relay blocks I bought actually had little screw terminals, and unfortunately these don't have that. So, so I'm just going to solder wire directly to the... Uh, male pin here. So what I did was made like a little loop and just wrapped it around, add a little bit of solder and away we go. So now I'll do the ground wire. And a little bit of solder and there it is. And then now I'll have the uh, red and blue, or excuse me, the blue and orange, and I'm going to do the same thing on the input. So what I like to do is put one towards the bottom, one towards the top, so that the inputs don't short themselves out. So these two ground pins, this one here and this one here, are actually connected. So you could chop that off to give you a little room, and you could also bend this pin out of the way. Uh, but if you're looking to buy these modules, you can buy them with screw terminals just like this on the front end, and that's the way I'd recommend doing it. Save you a little aggravation. All right, so now that that's done, we'll just pull some of the wire back through here. And uh, we'll just get it so it fits in there fairly snugly. Uh, you want to make sure that you leave some of the, the sheathing actually in the box here. So you don't want loose wires hanging out the outside. So now what I'm going to do is take my uh, black wire here, which is the hot coming in, and actually tie it to the two relays. So what I have is just some stranded wire here. And I'm just going to uh, run basically a pigtail wire here. 
and you can see it kind of looks like a pigtail that's why they call it and what I'll do is you can use a wire nut you can use whatever you want I'm just gonna add some solder to keep them stuck together here and then stick a crimp wire nut over top as an insulator all right so that'll take care of that so what essentially I have is now two wire links that I can run to my uh, input on my relays now I know what you're thinking you're like oh that's probably too long trust me when you get down into it it's not you'll be running out of wire quicker than you think uh, you don't want it to be super long because then you won't be able to fit them in the box but at the same token you don't want it to be too short now I always tend these wires just add a little solder to them so that way when you tighten a screw down it doesn't displace the stranded wires see this one's already done kind of trim the end and I do believe that the center is where I need to be let me just double check here all right so I think the two centers are actually the normally closed port all right so what I did was I just uh, gave them some power here to make the relay uh, energize and let's see Yeah, so the, these two, this pin and this pin are the normally closed, and then the middle and the right pin is the normally open, which means that when there's power, it's connected, and then if we move power, it's not connected, and then it's back on these two pins. So this will be normally closed, and this will be normally open. All right, so that's the hot coming in. Now what we need is two little wires going from the relay out to the plug. Now, because this wire is going to wrap around the screw, I like to also tin it, as you can see I did on this one. So you make it just a little longer so you can get a nice loop. And then we'll just twist it together here. And then we'll do the same tenon procedure I've done before here. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll just run these to the plug here. Now, because we are tightening the screw clockwise, we want the loop to go that direction as well, so that when we tighten it, it doesn't does not enter our basically it doesn't withdraw the wire from underneath the screw. See how the wire is now underneath of it. So you can just start it here, bend it around. There it is. Now, you'll notice there's this these little ears. And what that is, is that, as you can see on the neutral, the neutral comes up, it touches this brass or copper plate, whatever it is here, and then runs across this ear to the other side. So because I want them to be isolated, I have to break that little ear. So you just take any pair of little pliers and work it back and forth, and you can see the little ear is now removed. So that essentially this hot side plug and this hot side plug are isolated. Uh, on that note, you'll see that this is longer than this side. This is neutral, and this is your hot or black. Neutral is white, and then green is ground, the big pen at the bottom. So that's it. So let me just get a connector for uh, this, and then we'll get it all buttoned up. All right, as you can see, I'm just going to use a wire nut here to secure this. And that'll just make a good connection. Uh, now what I'm going to do is stick this uh, down in the box. It's going to be kind of tough for you to see what's going on in there, but I'm just trying to move all the wires out of the way. I have the hot wires here underneath of the screw, so when I put this screw in, it doesn't actually pinch them. See, I'm talking about with the link, I have to put the wire nut here out of the way. That's why you think you won't need much, but you really do. Okay, now, so now that I have the uh, plug fastened in place, you can see that's it. We're done.
uh, uh, down in the box here I have the insulation still inside on both the low voltage and the high voltage wire so now I can just take this and screw it back in and that is it so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a plug tester and we're gonna test the circuit and make sure we wired it up correctly so you'll take your plug in here and you'll plug it into the wall uh, now this is a plug tester as you can see it you just plug it in and it gives you lights that indicate the correct polarity or if you have something wrong it'll light up and tell you that there's a little graph here this is the same plug tester except this one is a button for GFCI so that you can test GFCI devices now I do not have this plugged into GFCI so I don't need to test that however I am gonna plug both of them in because remember one is hot until you activate the relay. The other one is not hot until you activate the relay. That's the difference between normally open and normally closed. So, as you can see, the top lights are both wire and correct, so that's a plus. The other thing to remember is that that plug is normally closed, which means that there's normally gonna be power on it. So we'll just do NC so that we know which one that is. And then this will be in O, or normally open. So we'll grab our low voltage cable here, and we'll give it um, ground, and then we'll give the red wire voltage. And then what we'll do is we'll give the orange wire voltage. You hear the relay click, and if you look at the top, it actually went out. So that means when I write that particular relay high, it takes power away. When I let it go, you can see the lights are back on. And then we'll activate it again. And then you'll see the lights go out. All right, so now we'll do the blue. And you should see, let's unplug this one. For this one to be okay, you need the two bottom, the two, the left and the right light to come on. So we'll grab the blue wire, give that power, and as you can see, the lights are both on. And we'll let it go, and there it goes. So when you, when normally open means when you give it a high, when you write it high with the Arduino, it'll turn it on. So that's it. So I'm just going to make a note of this one is orange and then this one is blue that way I remember so that's it so there you have it that is your very own super inexpensive DIY power switch tail so guys thanks for watching so if you found this video at all useful please hit the thumbs up button down below it really helps out a lot till next time